Welcome, Mike Parson here, starting a vlog, or t-log, I'll call it a talking log, giving a little more background, a little more slides, the topics we'll do in class. And what we're looking at in class three is relationship between two variables, and we have measures called covariance and correlation. We know how to summarize one variable. We know the mean, median, sort of the middle of a data set. We know IQR, standard deviations, and measure of spread. We now want to look at two variables. How do we see if two variables are related to each other? For that, we have measures called covariance and correlation. Covariance gives you direction of the relationship. Is it a positive, negative, or no relationship? Correlation gives you direction and strength. How strong is the relationship? When we're talking about relationships right now, we're talking about linear relationships. Would a line fit the relationship very well? Eventually, we'll talk about nonlinear relationships. But right now, these are measures of linear relationships. So as we just said, we've looked at mean, standard deviation, median, IQR for one variable. We now have two variables. And we're going to look at scatter plots to figure out how to see if two variables are related to each other. Covariance and correlation are ways to summarize what we're seeing in the scatter plot. As an example, this is actually from MBA students, University of Chicago, a long time ago. How much do you weigh? How many beers does it take to get you drunk? Self-reported data. So not the best data out there. But there seems to be some kind of positive relationship as weight goes up, number of beers it takes to get you drunk seems to go up. It's not an exact relationship. How do we know it's not an exact relationship? Well, they're not all on a straight line. Another example would be over here. If it's an exact relationship for the same X, it should give you the same Y, and it doesn't. So it's not an exact relationship. We want to summarize this relationship somehow, and that's what covariance and correlation allow us to do. By the way, at this point, we don't care what's X and what's Y. Doesn't matter. We're not trying to do prediction. We just want to know, is there a relationship between the two variables? What does our data look like? We have pairs of data. So we have n pairs of data, so n rows of data. And everyone's giving us now two numbers. They're giving us the number of beers it takes to get them drunk and their weight. So n rows of data, and then our data comp comprised of pairs. So there are two measures, covariance and correlation. We talk about covariance first, and then we'll get the correlation. And what they are is they tell us how strong a relationship exists between X and Y. Well, actually, correlation gives us the strength and direction. Covariance is a little more basic. Covariance just gives us direction of the relationship. And again, right now, we don't care what is X, what is Y. So for covariance, we talk about as X goes up, does Y go up? As X goes up, does Y go down? Or there's no relationship between them. Covariance is given by the strange symbol S of X, Y. So you might say S of X is the standard deviation of the X's. S of Y is the standard deviation of the Y's. S of X, Y is called the covariance. How do they co-vary? It's given by this formula. We'll never do this by hand. This is built in the R, of course. And it's just these deviations from X bar, deviations from Y bar. And that's what covariance is. What are the units of covariance? And this is interesting. The units of covariance are actually units x. I'm writing by a finger if you can't tell. And units y. It's units of x times units of y. And that's why we don't care about the value. We only care about the sign. Sounds strange, but a covariance of 5 million has the same implication as a covariance of 5. They're both positive. Because it depends on the units, we don't know what's a small or large covariance because the units can be really wacky here. So covariance, we only care about the sign. What the heck is covariance measuring? Well, it's an idea of where your data lies. Notice that we have these things at X bar and Y bar. So if most of your data is this way. We're to the right of X bar and we're above Y bar. So if we look at X minus X bar times Y minus Y bar, that's a positive and a positive. Now, over here, which is the left of x bar, so we're over here, which is the left of x bar, we're below y bar, we have a negative times a negative, and that equals a positive. So if most of your data is in this area, we're adding up positive creatures. Now, think about the opposite, and you can see where this is going. If most of your data is like this, we're to the left of x bar, we're above y, oh, we're to the left of x bar, and we're above y bar, 
So that would be a minus and a positive. Now over here, we're to the right of x bar, we're below y bar, so it'd be a positive and negative. Those are all negative things, so we'll be adding up negative things. If your data's over here, covariance is kind of be negative. If your data's over here, covariance is positive. Now it's a huge hand wave. If our data is all over the place, we're going to say they cancel each other out, and you get a covariance of zero. So basically, what this formula is doing is measuring where the heck is most of your data. Is it this direction, this direction, all over the place, zero. Positive relationship is one goes up, the other goes up. Negative relationship is one goes up, the other goes down, or zero. No relationship between X and Y. As an example, we have Major League Baseball data, and we have the winning percentage, and we have gain, uh, the payroll. So here we have the payroll, how much they paid in millions of dollars, how many games they won. And you can see there's some teams that pay a lot and don't win that many. Some pay, teams that pay a little and win a lot, and that's what you're looking for. Here's the data. Would you say there's a positive, negative, or no relationship between the two variables? You may want to use the word slightly. There's a slight relationship between X and Y, but we're not allowed to use the word slight when we talk about covariance. There's no measure of strength. So you would say there's a positive relationship. You wouldn't feel too strongly about it, but you'd have to say, appears to be a positive relationship between wins and payroll. Well, you can load the data in. We have an RStudio space uh, for vlog correlation. You can see it in your RStudio space, and you can load the data in just like this. Look at the data. How do you get covariance? It's the COV command gives you covariance. It gives you what's called a covariance matrix. So there's three variables. It gives you a, a three by three matrix, a bunch of different covariances. And you can see that it's a symmetric matrix. This is the same as this, and this value is the same as this value. So it's a symmetric matrix, so it's a very interesting. That's called a covariance. And the covariance matrix has another interesting property. Turns out the covariance of a variable with itself is the variance of the variable. Yeah, it's weird. But if you just put X in, you, you get the variance formula out of here. So what do you find in this covariance matrix thing? What we call the off-diagonals are the covariances, and the diagonal, which is right here, those are the variances. So if we actually ask R, hey, give us the variance of the payroll variable, you can see it's the same as what's the diagonal there. The off-diagonals are the covariances. And you can see, if we look at wins and payroll, or payroll and winning percentage, we get different covariance values, even though the variables are very similar. So covariance does depend on the units. All we care about is it's a positive covariance. So there's a positive relationship between the two variables. Now, again, covariance depends on the units. All we care about are the signs. Now, how do we make uh, size matter. How do we know whether it's a strong or weak relationship? We have correlation. Correlation is given by this notation, r sub x, y. You take the covariance, you divide by the standard deviations. What does that do? It knocks out the units. So this thing is unitless, and it's even more than that. You can show in 110, it's a stat 110 problem that they do in a homework. So it's not easy, it's not insanely difficult, but it takes a little bit of math. Correlation is always in the interval minus 1 to 1. So unlike covariance, correlation is bounded. It's between minus 1 and 1. The closer you are to 1, the closer you are to minus 1, more you are an exact relationship. In fact, if you're 1 or minus 1, you're an exact linear relationship. If you plotted your data, it would look like a straight line. So correlation gives you direction and strength. Notice here that these things are always positive. Standard deviation always has to be positive. So correlation and covariance are always the same sign. They have to be, because they're both telling you the same direction. Correlation is just a little funkier in that it also gives you strength. So correlation is actually a lot easier to interpret than a covariance. This is what a correlation matrix looks like. Notice here it's got one on the diagonals. And notice that it doesn't matter. The units don't matter anymore. The correlation is 0.367, or about 0.37 between wins and payroll. So correlation says there's a sort of a weak root positive relationship between the two variables. We can interpret everything looking at the absolute value of correlation. And over here, what we just saw, sort of a weak to moderate relationship. Correlation gives you strength. So it's nice to interpret. 
Again, it measures how strong a linear relationship there is, how well aligned would fit the data. For our beer data, we come back, we see the correlation is about 0.7 between the number of beers it takes to get you drunk and your weight. And we'd call that sort of a very strong relationship. Notice that correlation only measures linear relationships. The other issue is like standard deviation, like the mean, correlation is highly affected by outliers. Here we have four data sets and they all have the same correlation value. That's interesting. And that's a, let's see, sort of a strong relationship between X and Y, correlation 0.81. However, here's the plots of the data set. That's an appropriate use of correlation. Not this really, that's a nonlinear relationship. Correlation's not designed to pick that up. This is weird, it's got a weird outlier. If that point went down, it'd be an exact relationship, probably correlation would be one. That shows you correlation is highly affected by outliers. Another example, not a good use of correlation. Again, if this were over here, or even remove, correlation would be zero, no relationship between X and Y. So again, you want to plot your data, be careful. Correlation is only appropriate for really linear relationships. And finally, as we say all the time, correlation is not causation. Just because there's a relationship between X and Y does not mean it's a causal relationship. It could even be a spurious relationship. And we talk more about this throughout the semester. Remember, correlation is not causation. There's a fun game. We'll have a link on the website called Guessing Correlations. Can you guess the correlations? This is the one built for, I think, two-year-olds because, gosh, one of them has to be a positive relationship. What could it be? I'm going to guess this one. And then what do you see? The tighter the relationship, the higher the correlation absolute value. So that's got to be this one. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I think that's correct. Ah, <laughs> that's what students do in exams. Yeah, I really, which one did I mean? So I really want that one. Okay. So called guessing correlation games. But again, the closer you are to a straight line, the closer correlation will be an absolute value to a one. Correlation has a strong, strong impact in the financial services sector. We want to know what sectors are correlated with each other, what sectors move in opposite directions, and what sectors have no relationship to one another. So the idea is that if the markets are all tightly correlated, there's no safe haven. If one area of the market goes down, what goes up? Where would you put your money? Diversification that we'll see in class is driven by the fact that you want assets that move in different directions. And the way we find those is to look at correlation among the different assets. Hope you enjoyed this little trip into covariance and correlation land. Hope you're having a great day also, and we'll see you soon in class. Thank you.